Do you want some random poses from us? Kind of like. Oh yeah, we can give you random poses. You guys rolling? Hi, I'm Mikey O'Connell with The Hollywood Reporter and this is THR Presents The After Party, a conversation with the cast of the Apple comedy, murder mystery, musical, horror movie, cartoon. It gets a lot of different shows. Um, and I'm so grateful to be joined today by stars Ben Schwartz, uh, Ike Barinholtz, Jamie Demetrio, and Zoe Chow. Woo! Hi. So we are going to, um, I think that we are going to take this conversation in a spoilery direction at some point. So everyone be prepared for that. A show like this is a really interesting thing I would imagine to be cast in because you have this whole like Rashomon style of storytelling that, that shifts tones and shifts focus from character to character, episode to episode. When you each came on board, were you given a rundown of like what your episode would be, or were you just given the sort of like broad strokes of the show? Mikey, point to someone. Down. Mikey, point to someone. Point to someone, Mikey. Say somebody's name quick. Ben, Ben, Ben. I'm going to pass to Jamie. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm from London. Um, I won't reveal my age to the end. We'll put that uh, alongside <laughs> the twist. Um, um, <laughs> Um, Sorry, Mikey. I should have taken it, Mikey. I apologize. <laughs> Not potato. Um, so, uh, how did I? So, yeah, I think that we were told pretty quickly what our genres were going to be. I mean, I guess you know the unveiling of all information regarding the casting process of the after party was um, euphoric. You know, you you start knowing that it's you know Lord and Miller, and it's like. You know, Chris Miller is extraordinary, like, oh, wow, I'm going to be working with them. Well, if the cast are good, it's a bonus. And then it's like, you hear one and it's like, well, if it's just them, that's fine. And then it's like, oh, literally everything that gets mentioned about the show is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, so it just, you know, I think that that was the kind. And then and then on top of that, it's like, oh, and by the way, you're all uh, going to be in different, like extremely different genres. And like me finding out personally that I'm going to be part of like a, a high school-esque American Pie type genre thing is like living out a, a, a childhood, like never gonna happen fantasy. Like kids in the UK dream of going to American schools, like having Jello for lunch and on a college <laughs> tray and wearing a short sleeve shirt and a backpack and uh, just saying high school instead of secondary school feels good. So yeah, that's my very long answer. Sorry, Ben. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, uh, America. I think you crushed it. And America, of course, says you did all right. Um, I, I, I was so excited. I found out at the very beginning, the, I got an email from Chris being like, hey, there's this role in this show and it's a murder mystery. And I'm like, ooh, ooh my. And then uh, he went on to say each episode is a different genre. Each character has their own genre. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And then he said that mine was a musical, which was both. I was so excited and so terrified at the same time being like, oh, I get to sing and dance. And like, oh, no, I get to sing and dance. Um, so it was, it was all those things, but, um, the cat, the, exactly what Jamie said, when he started saying, Hey, these are the people that, uh, are attached here, the people that we're going out to, like for other, I was like, Oh my goodness, this is going to be one of the best comedic cat. Everybody I've, I'm in awe of every single person in this cast. I, I love them. They could all be the star of any show or movie they want. And the fact that Lord and Miller got them all together for this was, um, you know, the, a treat amongst all treats. Yeah, imagine if you were one of the last people cast, you wouldn't even really care about your part. If you just saw like the call sheet on this show, it was like a snowball of talent. Yeah, um, I mean, if if Lord and Miller asked, I feel like any of us to do a show about poop where we would play like poop, we would do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it would be so awesome. <laughs> I actually am. I don't, I don't want to announce it right now because we're going to announce it tomorrow, but I am... Um, I'm the star of Chris and Phil's new show called Turds. Are you serious? Yeah, I booked, I found out last night I booked the part. I put myself on tape for, for diarrhea. I put myself on bowl and they like just love what I did. And, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a fun one. This is going to be, this one is going to be a fun one. <laughs> I've told them in the past, I don't want to be typecast in my life. So they, they wouldn't, they didn't call me. Um, 
They know that I was I've so excited. Many times. When, when they told me everyone who was in it, I was so excited. And then they hadn't cast Walt yet. And it was so serendipitous. I happened to watch Staff Let's Flats season one. I watched all of them, I think, in one night. And I texted Chris Miller just apropos of nothing. I was like, oh my God, have you seen Staff Let's Flats? He's like, dude, he's going to play Walt if we can get the immigration stuff worked out. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, we didn't. So he snuck in here illegally. The next time he gets to America, <laughs> he will go to jail. 100%. That's really that's why he's apologizing that. to America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something that I think a lot of people don't understand about television is how uh, tedious it can be making it. You have to film things over and over, getting your coverage, your different angles. And in a show that largely goes over the same events over and over again from a different perspective, just how much time did you spend and filming certain scenes. I mean, we shot the scene, you know, the kind of home base for the show is the living room where Danner's kind of interrogating us all. And I think we shot in that room for, I, I want to say two years. <laughs> um, it was a very long, felt like a very long time. But again, like if it was like a serious show or something, you know, maybe it would be boring, but like, Mikey, you're with like some of the funniest people in the world who have been locked in their houses for a year. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what it's like to have Ben Schwartz? He's been sitting on bits for a year. <laughs> the face of you. Like, look at Sam Richardson is like, oh, here's a thought I had five months ago. Uh, so you were getting like just this amazing material that uh, uh, we were all just dying to give each other. So we were constantly constantly uh laughing on set I, I thought but it was it was a wild exercise because it was like groundhog's day like not only were we you know at the height of covid filming in october 2020 to like uh february 2021 but like you know revisiting the same night in the same costume in, in <laughs> but also going home <laughs> and having very similar uh experiences at home of just like <laughs> not <laughs> you know i'm home i'm terrified I'm, um, you know, because COVID is so scary. And so there was, there was just this moment of like, whoa, this is a mental exercise that I, am I up to it? Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but truly it was such a joyous um, gift to be able to, to hang out with this new fam, dysfunctional family every day. But I, and we couldn't, I think, have been in better hands than Chris Miller, who just kept us on track because it would be very difficult to, there would just be moments where I'm like, where are we in the story? What genre? Um, what came before this and what is coming after and who am I? Uh, and Chris would always, um, make sure we knew where we were. And between, you know, as everyone's been saying, between takes the kind of like dynamic between the cast who yeah, had all been through a very similar experience. It was almost like conversational speed dating. It's like, because there were so many of us and we'd spent such a sort of like long time together. It's like between scenes, it's like, oh, I haven't spoken to X for a while, shuffle. I haven't spoken to X for a while, shuffle. Mm -hmm. And then like, occasionally, occasionally as you're going round, it's like, oh, Chris Miller's one of the people that you can talk to and hang out with because on top of directing one, one of the most complicated TV series I've ever seen, let alone been part of, like he was also like down to hang and like, and just so in control of everything and such a sort of like, I don't know, lighthouse presence kind of like just, just, just keeping everything feeling safe. It was amazing. Yeah, He's the incredible. Whole was so down to hang and ev everyone, of course, except for John early, who kind of puts out an energy of just like, leave me alone. Oh yeah. John doesn't want to be around people. He doesn't want to connect with people. He's not that type of person. He's got like his entourage that travel with him and he just kind of stays with them. But everyone else I thought got along quite beautifully. In terms of the wardrobe, you're wearing the same thing for, I would imagine, months. Uh, did they did they wash the clothes or did anyone go like, <laughs> no. and just... not one time was it washed off. But there yeah. is, wait, there is a great, uh, Chris and uh, Tracy, who is our wardrobe. So there's a great thing in different people's perspective of what happened in the night. They change what people were wearing. So for me, uh, I had a musical episode and in that episode for my episode only, they lined my jacket with like this gorgeous pattern and they gave me different sneakers. And then I, in my head, the way that I saw Anik was he was wearing a cooler shirt with different buttons on it. 
And then I think for Ike and Zoe, something you guys had something too. Oh, they gave me like Jack Reacher shoulder pads for my action scenes. <laughs> um, so they 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 st stacked me up. Yeah, and they shortened for for the second episode, Ike's episode, um, through Brett's lens. They shortened my skirt and gave me fishnet stockings. <laughs> Brett. I did not know that. He's got the mind of like a sailor from the 40s, I guess. <laughs> I put the dress on and I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> I'm just going to put out there, they didn't ever change my costume because none of the characters remember me at all. So it was brown, brown, brown. <laughs> uh, Zoe, to your point about the, the tweaked outfit in, in that one episode, how how much do you think this show benefits from a rewatch? Because I, I feel like watching it again, I would see so much different stuff. Well, we were just talking about this recently, but when, <laughs> during the shoot, there would be, there was a day where someone was like, could you put this wig on and just take a picture in the mirror? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, and then you know, <laughs> had no idea. And then, and then <laughs> Ike and I did a photo, wedding photo shoot where they had us, in, in these very specific poses and you know our hands would drop a little and they go no 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 bring it up bring it up and just like this and then we find out there are all these clues baked into each episode um that I guess reddit really caught on to and and mm -hmm. I'm still I need to watch it six more times to understand all the things that are happening but yeah definitely worth a a rewatch. We encourage it because I don't know about you guys, but the way my deal is structured, I do get paid by the stream. Right. <laughs> so we obviously want people to watch it as many times as they can. And you still get paid off the trailer, right? However many people watch that YouTube trailer, you get a little piece of it. A very little piece, but the numbers are going up, slowing down a little bit, but they're still they're still moving in the right direction. Of course. Yeah, dude, we need our money anyway. We get it. There, there also is, I think once you go to the end and you find out who the killer is, if you follow the pattern of what that person is doing and stuff like that. You can find all the things that she or he <laughs> was doing. Um, there's little clues that uh, are kind of dropped throughout the series from the clear themselves that you can kind of latch on to. Yeah, I actually did watch it twice. And that is a fun thing to watch is knowing who the murderer is in like, there's a lot of key moments where they did a, I think a very good job at, at like, managing to divert attention but also kind of showing you a little bit like it might be me very good acting for whoever played that part really good acting you said right uh, sorry I didn't really, hear good. Said. Very, really good very truly acting fantastic what? acting wow okay cool we, we are going to get into that exquisite performance in a little bit i i, I promise um it, you have all these comedy actors in one place you were filming the same thing over and over again with all these like nuances. I imagine there were a ton of alts in this. Uh, I imagine a lot of stuff you all loved, maybe didn't make the final edit. Anything that you were just sort of bummed to not see or any characters who you wish you'd, you'd had a bit more time playing off of over the course of the season? Oh, what, a, what an interesting question. I, I remember, yeah. I remember the, the day where I was shooting all of my interrogation scenes with Tiffany. Uh, I've worked a lot with Tiffany and just our improv styles are just kind of mesh up. So we were doing, we were going off. We went on like a, like a, like a, like a 10 minute run all about military time and like getting it wrong, like what 0800 is. And it was so, so funny. Like, like, you know, that moment where like the grips are like, you know, wiping their eyes and God bless Chris Miller, who just comes up and is like, that was so funny almost certainly won't be in the show <laughs> so he let me down easy but yeah there was there was so much i mean you could you could you could just make a whole other season of just the all i've also never had so much trust with a director more that they're going to choose the right take ever like you, I, you do something and you're working with chris miller and phil lord and they're two of the funniest and they just know how to tell a story so well that we could do a hundred takes of something and i know that whatever whatever they choose will be the right one or if they trim a, a piece that'll be the right reason to trim and I, I was uh it's very it feels wonderful to trust someone that much and it allows you to take risks and it allows you to go for things that maybe on a set that's a little bit more uh confined you wouldn't be able to do so 
um, it's kudos to him and, and, and the writers, but there was definitely a lot of improv. Some of it was used and some of it uh, probably was just fuel to keep us going. And you know what I mean? And like, you know, we're all supposed to be friends or like me and Sam are supposed to be best friends. So we would do bits all the time or, you know what I mean? So it's like all that stuff, I think just helped keep the ease and the looseness of what all the characters were. Ben, um, oh, yeah. oh no, go, go Jamie. Please, no, it's you, it's you. It's <gasps> always been you, please. <laughs> Really? Um, ben did an amazing, uh, had amazing runs with uh, Xavier, coming up with Xavier songs on the spot. He did uh, a song called Cupid's Dick and um, a song called <laughs> uh, Fart Grease. Mm. Um, and he, there was at least one verse and a chorus. Um, yeah. And I don't even know if the camera was on. <laughs> I don't think it was. I think that was for you, basically, Zoe. And you laughed, so it was worth it. Uh, maybe uh, you can get part grease in Lord and Miller's upcoming uh, TV series, Poop. It, it works sure. perfect. It's good. Yeah, I, we're, saving, we're saving spoilers to the end, if possible. But <laughs> yeah. um, I was just going to say that I think that the... Uh, I think that the most surprising thing watching it back is how much they kind of like celebrated a lot of the amazing improv that I saw that you accept in the moment on set, like, ah, this probably won't make it in, but they really are so generous with like, you know, especially considering the script as was perfect. You don't need to do anything to it, but they really do, you know, the encouragement is so like open and what you end up seeing is a really nice mix of like the different sort of methods they use to get this show made. One of which was to kind of trust the actors, as Ben said, to, to, to feel their way to, to feel their way through scenes. So there's so many bits that I assumed would never see the light of day that I was like, oh my God, that, yeah, we'll yeah they managed to get that into the narrative. It's yeah. incredible. Well, you want to find yourself in a situation with guys like Chris where you don't need to improvise, but they would love for you to. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That is really amazing. Exactly right. Ben, so much of your performance sort of hinges on the rapport and chemistry with the absolutely dreamy Sam Richardson. Um, had you ever worked together? And, and how was working together? Tell me about that. I never worked with him before. I, I was developing a project before that I tried to get him to do and he couldn't do it because he was busy. So I never met him until the first, and also we did our table reads over Zoom. So I never met him in person until- Are you serious? Yeah, I never like spent time with Sam until uh, the first day we had filming and it was immediate friendship and not even friendship it was immediate like best friendship we were so we i mean a, a lot of us come from comedy backgrounds and ike is you know a legend uh in the improv world uh, as well and sam had done chicago and detroit and so i feel like when you come from a long form improv background you have a kind of language with another person that has come from that improv background like even if you haven't met them uh ike and i can do bits forever just because we this is how you know how we were taught how to uh, do improv, but Sam and I had that language and we're just very similar as human beings. And he has such a wonderful heart and I care about him so much. And so it was, it was that thing of us immediately being off the races, but also anytime there was even a cut, we would keep doing bits to keep our rapport and our like being loose and stuff like that. So when they say action, there was never like, it was just always us hanging out and the cameras happened to be rolling. Um, and, uh, he's just an incredible scene partner. You want to, I want to make him look as good as I possibly can. And there was never any competition with any of us. Nobody was ever like, I'm going to get a funnier line than you. You're with creators right now. And you're with some of the best. Zoe's one of my favorite actors I've ever seen. Ike has created shows. He's been in Jamie, creates his own show. So we're out there trying to make the best show we can make. So nobody's, we're willing to sacrifice something to make the scene great. Uh, and I think everybody's on the same page where it's like, we feel so lucky to be a part of this. Let's try to make it as good as we can. And so uh, Sam and I very much so would always just try to build the other one up and try to, you know, try to make the scene score any way we could. Jamie, forgive my ignorance, but do you have like a cultural precedence for secondary school reunions in the UK? Is that oh. a thing like it is here? I mean, it's on the same topic as my kind of like desperate, like childhood desire to be part of kind of American fun. The answer to that is no, uh, I, we, we really don't. Like it does exist, you have reunions, but I think that we're just less of a celebratory society. Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I think that there's like, it's like people take a, a lot of enjoyment from the not attending button or whatever the equivalent of that has been 
over the years. Mm. So it's mm. like, so there's no, so that doesn't really get <laughs> off. But it was, it was, uh, it was so fun to, it was so fun to kind of take part in that side of it. And I mean, the other interesting thing, I guess, these days is like, I guess more so than before a high school reunion is just being on social media because I think I know more about the people I went to school with through social media than I did while I was with them at school and I haven't seen a lot of them for about 20 years so that's a kind of another side to it. <laughs> Any high school reunion participants or attendees among us? Uh, yeah I had mine it was it was again like Jimmy said like social media uh, has made it so you you don't need to like sit and like catch up and talk to like two people you can kind of just you know what everyone's up to um i'm from chicago so we just like i don't know like we literally just we had like a nice reunion and then like we just went to like a hotel room and just like crammed like as many people as you can in one room and just everyone drinks like 15 beers and talks about michael jordan it's like, <laughs> like the most basic <laughs> ass reunion <clears throat> That's like any I, Chicago party. Yeah, it's like every, it's how every Chicago party ends yeah, for guys of my generation. When I lived in New York, I went to my five year, but then when I moved out here, I couldn't go anywhere. But it was it was so funny because I went to so there's I, I grew up in New York and grew up in the the North Bronx, then moved to Westchester, and there's this wings place that we'd all go to in high school. And then five years later or whatever, we went again. And I was like, how did I used to eat like this? It destroyed me. <laughs> the fried food that I used to eat and all that stuff, it absolutely demolished my body. Um, but it was so funny because when you're a kid, you just like, I'm like, yeah, I'll have a milkshake and 12 teriyaki wings and I'll have, it's like, um, so it was a very funny, like to like hang out with friends and all of a sudden be like, oh, I can't do it. We gotta, we gotta slow down. This is insane. <laughs> you guys, let's have a reunion after party at Sweet Green. Oh, I love that idea. That'd be and also, you get money from Sweet Green. Aren't you an ambassador of Sweet Green? Well, listen, I, I, I'm friends with the owner, and I, I'm not here to talk about it, though. I mean, do I personally think it's the freshest, easiest way to get a healthy, low calorie <laughs> meal on the go? Yeah. Do they deliver on Postmates, Caviar, DoorDash, Uber Eats? Yeah. You're turning it into a commercial. You're literally turning it into a commercial. No, like I don't that. want to talk about it, but there's locations within two miles of where you Stop, are. man. What was what was that, Mikey? What was the question? Oh no, I was just saying everyone look under your chair. There is a sweet green gift. Oh card. my god, Mikey, Ike. <laughs> uh, salad. Gift of health and taste. And Michael Jordan is here. <laughs> <laughs> a real a real wild card uh in the cast was uh the the young girl who played Ike and Zoe's daughter's character. Um I, I I feel like your characters would be visited by social services after the events of the season, uh, considering how neglected she was and, and brought to a murder scene. Um, but how was how was working with like a kid on set? Everly is um, uh, more professional than anyone in anyone in the cast. Um, she works more oh. than we. She works more than we do. Um, she is. Uh, so talented <laughs> and just can't always hit her mark. Um, I think, didn't she do some improv or you know, Chris would like come in and throw her a line and she would stick it. And, um, and what is wild too, is I do really think she looks like our kid. Ike. Yeah. Like, I just, um, <laughs> I do think that would be our child if we were. I, I just want to thank you, Mikey, by the way, because everyone's like, oh, your character is such a bad dad. And it's like, yeah, but Zoe was also a bad mom. Oh, yeah. Lest, <laughs> lest we forget. She's like, I can't take care of my kid. I might want to hook up with this guy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hired a babysitter. Yeah, she and, it didn't work out, and it didn't work out. And you were like, you need to deal with this because I need to, like, Maybe self care because I need to get man. mine. <laughs> Listen, the point is, if social services comes. Neither of us get custody of her, except <laughs> no. But Everly is really, really gifted and was as was such a wonderful dreamboat to work with. I love that she got her moment in the season finale. Yeah. Um, uh, and I guess that brings me to the season finale, and we haven't addressed this yet, but the the murderer is is here. In this very room? In this very what? room. Are you this serious? Show Mikey? Your, show your face. Mikey? Raise, <laughs> raise, uh, everyone, raise, just raise your hand <laughs> if you're the murderer. Uh, 
I used my stop video function. It worked really well, I thought. <laughs> and, and, oh, it blew the whole thing up. Uh, ben, when did you find out that you were the, uh, the, the mastermind? I don't know if that's really the appropriate term in this situation, but when, uh, did, you, when did everyone else find out? Um, I found out on the day that uh, Chris emailed me and offered me this role. Uh, he said it was it was one of the best emails of all time. He said, hey, I'm doing the show. I have this character that I wrote with you in mind already. You know, the biggest compliment of all time. Four minutes, 40 seconds, four minutes, 39. And um, so there's a clock. <laughs> there's a clock on our screen. <laughs> um, and so um, he said, hey, there's a show I'm doing. Uh, there's this character I have you in mind for. It's a Rashomon type comedy. Your genre is going to be musical and cooler than all that. You're the killer and nobody knows that yet. You're the only person I'm telling. Tell me if you want to talk. And so I immediately got on the phone with him. But it, for me, I love murder mysteries growing up. And so I get to have that moment where it's like, it's not me or you know what I mean? It's, it's heaven to me. And the idea of trying to play that and the idea of me knowing that, okay, if I'm playing someone who has the ability to kill somebody, it would be so much more fun if he doesn't think he's bananas. He thinks he's doing everything because he's been down the whole time and his life has been, you know, been pushed down and stuff like that. And so um, it was really fun to get to play those levels. And I put little things throughout the whole show where you, if you watch, you can be like, oh, okay, he's screwed. He knows he's screwed here or he got out of it here. He's a little bit, you know what I mean? So it was, it's the best. It's, it's so much fun uh, to, to know that stuff before. I don't know when everybody else did though. What did everybody else know? Jamie, you still don't know, you said, right? Uh, well, I found out this evening and I'm blown away. Last uh, episode just you... dropped in England. Yeah, England's a couple months behind. <laughs> yeah, and Friends tonight, last step. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We finally got it. They've been holding it back. Um, no, I, I, um, I found out when I read the script and I didn't have a clue that it was him. To be honest, I, I'd sort of heard that the uh, the kind of, I was gonna be playing like a, a particular red herring role, I guess like the guy who doesn't say stuff uh, to people is, is, is someone that you're gonna have your eye on, like doesn't get the chance to talk and stuff. But um, so I spent the whole time thinking it was me, lo and behold, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's BS. Um, but uh yeah i i was i was really shocked and ben did such an unbelievable job it, it so makes so much sense hearing you say that about how like that moment is something that you were like fixated on and were excited by because you just did such an extraordinary job with that with that monologue at the end it just felt like so much like especially like because we were shooting that scene chronologically and it's like a four-day shoot or something so like even though i knew like the climax of you revealing it it was a real it was a real uh gut punch it was amazing Oh, I think so. Did you guess? No, I, I had no idea. I actually like forgot. <laughs> I mean, I was so engrossed in 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 the reading the scripts and 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 then actually getting to shoot these scenes. You know that I it. I guess it's a testament to um, just the storytelling too. That there's just so much more than also just uh, you know trying to figure out who the killer is. Um, you know, and I, I, even when we had got to shoot the big reveal and I knew going into it, we all did that it was Jasper. It was still, just like Jamie said, it was it was devastating to, to re remember, oh my gosh, yeah, he did it. Because at that point, you know, you become attached to all these characters and they, are, they become 360 degrees of, you know, human being and, and you don't want anyone to have done it. Um, and Dave did such a great job playing Xavier that you really do believe that any one of us could have done it. Um, but <laughs> it was very moving to watch Ben um, do that final scene and, and just really sad. The show's getting a second season. We know that Tiffany is coming back. The setup of this kind of makes it seem unlikely that any of you would, but any of you are any of you? Might any of you? I'm going to be full time on turds. <laughs> I don't, I mean, maybe I'll come in for like a guest spot one day, but we have, we have our hands full and dirty. That's good. Um, I, I pitched an idea, but I don't think it's going to be used. I thought it, I really wanted uh, when they, when they get a second season, I, I was like, Chris, what if he already said no. And I said, great. But what if, um, what 
<laughs> if uh, Tiffany's character is like, well, the only way to find a murderer is to get inside the head of a murderer. And then they wheel me out like Hannibal Lecter. And he laughed and said, absolutely not. I go, you got it. Thank you. What a great season this was. Thanks for your time. <laughs> um, before I let you all go, as we've said, this was an absolutely stacked ensemble and you represent uh, just a small portion of that ensemble. Who, who didn't show up today, uh, would we like to talk smack about before um, we put this to bed? Oh, I mean, John Early. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're thinking about a mean person, probably John, right? Yeah, he's a he's a nasty guy. Um, I'm, I'm I mean, trying. You, to that, that's my pick. You guys pick who you like. I always um, like talking about smack about you, like, but you're here. Yeah, I'm here, so you can't do it. I would love to talk a little bit of smack about Kelvin Hugh. Oh, oh yes. yes! Oh my yeah. God! Take him down, Jamie. Take yes. him down, Jamie. But it's only because I know he can take it. Um, I don't think anyone else has the backbone to take smack in this cast, and I'm saying that right here, right now. So I'm saying it. Kelvin, you is a loser. Bad <laughs> <laughs> no. person. Bad creative. The, the joke. The joke there is that he's a genius. And uh, my, an earlier answer to a question: What things that were lost that I loved. Uh, Kelvin had this amazing, amazing, amazing uh, uh, flashback of his own, uh, like a kind of uh, frat boy thing that was hysterical. And I would have loved to have seen that, but I understand, you know, the reason stuff, but Kelvin is uh, a true joy. And uh, in terms of what I just said, a loser, apparently. Yeah. I just wanted to bring him up. And that was my only way. It was the smack segment. Well, um, we, we will wrap it up with that. Uh, thank you all for doing well, that. that. So much. Um, I've, I've been Mikey O'Connell with The Hollywood Reporter, and this has been uh, THR Presents The After Party. Thank, thank you, Mikey. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs>